Hello guys, I'm going to show you today how we can quickly put a scene together using Chaos Cosmos and the asset browser that comes built in to the latest version of V-Ray. To begin, let's open up a new scene in 3ds Max. And the first thing we're going to want to do is create a light. So we could go the traditional way and go over here, but now we can actually use Cosmos Browser. And I'm going to go to HDRIs and I've downloaded a few. So you can download them by clicking on one and hit download and it will download. Once they're downloaded, you'll see a green button here that you can click to bring it into your scene. You can also go down here and say show downloaded only. So I'm going to bring in this daytime and I'm going to bring it into our untitled scene. I'm also going to just make one big viewport so we can see what's going on. And next up, let's add a 3D model. So let's use a vehicle, one that I've downloaded. So this SUV. And there is that car. Um, the next thing we're going to want to do is create a V-Ray plane, which is essentially, it's the same as a plane, but it's infinite. So rather than just making uh, a plane here, and then rendering. The V-Ray plane is actually infinite. So if we go down to V-Ray and add the V-Ray plane here. This is actually gonna go off all the way to the horizon, which is gonna help. So if we've got sun and it's bouncing, it's only gonna bounce on this plane. Whereas if we had an infinite plane like this, it's gonna bounce and bounce light back up. It's just a more effective way to add ground and that's going to go all the way to the horizon so we can actually take a look at that if we run an interactive render that's really overexposed so without adding a camera quick way just to turn on auto exposure is to go to camera under our v-ray settings and we'll go to auto exposure and we can see what our plane does it goes all the way to the horizon so as i'm moving around And we can see our car and we can see that that HDRI is doing a really nice job of lighting our scene already. So we actually want to get some ground material on here and rather than making it ourselves we can now take advantage of the V-Ray material library browser and if we go down to ground and we'll add something like this. So I believe I've got the V-Ray plane selected you can tell that from here and I'll right click and apply to selected objects. And we can see that's applied. Now let's take a look around this scene. If I select the car and press Z and make sure we're in perspective view with a P, we can kind of zoom around the car and start looking for a nice angle. So something like this looks kind of cool. We can add a camera now. So we'll go over to the create panel, camera, We'll go to V-Ray and the physical camera. And if we just click and drag and draw that anywhere, it doesn't really matter where, and then hit Control C, that's gonna move the camera into our viewport view. And then if I press C, you'll see in this top left that this V-Ray camera is now selected. So we're looking through that V-Ray camera and we can change our camera settings in here but we're not going to look at that just yet. So now we want to populate this scene a little bit. I will open up Cosmos browser, Cosmos, Cosmos, and we'll go to vegetation. And I think uh, some rocks. So there, there's loads of stuff in here you can choose from, which is really handy, again, for like demo and scenes like this. If I put show downloaded only on, it's going to show the ones I've downloaded, which I've already had a little play with. So I'm going to bring in these two rocks into our untitled scene. We can even see them already coming in to the interactive view here. So I'm going to stop this while we kind of scatter these rocks around. Let's go to two views and to change our viewport from four to two, we can actually right click and go to viewport layout tab and change that to two 
Yours might already be open over here. I close it because I don't think it warrants the space. Like I'll just open it up when I use it. So let's go to our camera view here. And I press Shift F to turn on safe frames. And we can see what's going on in our scene here. And we've got two rocks over here. Um, I'm gonna pull them off scene. And what I'm gonna do is paint with them. So for this, we wanna have our graphite toolbar open. So you can go to customize, show UI, and make sure the ribbon is open. And object paint is what we want. So click on that. And now let's select these two rocks. And we wanna paint with selected objects. Paint on. Let's just have um, the grid, so that's gonna be the ground. Like later on we'll go through how we can paint on two different objects and what a lot more of this does. But you'll see now if I click, we can start clicking and painting these rocks on. And obviously this is very uniform, so it's not ideal. But what we can do over here is start playing with some of the randomized settings. So first, if we put random on, this is gonna randomize the scale. And we want this only like maxing out at 110%, um, down all the way down to 20%. And this is the rotation. So this is gonna rotate our object around. And again, like our spacing. So we're just trying to randomize this a little bit more. Um, and the spacing here, sorry, that's the move. And if I turn this spacing up, you can see that's looking a little bit more realistic. You can spread them out. And that's a really quick way to kind of get a bit of an environment going on. And then we can turn this off and we can individually select these rocks and they're all different shapes and sizes. So if we actually run an interactive now, you should see a lot more environment going on. And of course we can move these around individually to set our scene. So if we want to show more of the car here. Now let's look at bringing a tree and some foliage in. So I'll open up Cosmos. I think it's Cosmos or Cos Cosmos. 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 We'll go to trees and I'll bring this English oak in. And we'll just use this to frame our car a little bit to so just have it kind of coming in on that corner. There are some really fun things you can do, like add melt modifiers and then kind of animate the trees growing and stuff like that. But we can talk about that another time. And let's also bring in these junipers. This tree is also massive. I don't know if it's gonna cast some shade. Uh, let's take a look on the interactive render. So I'm gonna scale that down a little bit, maybe like 75. And I'm gonna hide that for now so I can make selections a little bit easier. So these are our three bushes. So I'm gonna select those. I've got four, I've got a rock here as well, but that's fine. Um, I'll pull them over. So I'm kind of using this section over here just as a bit more of like a palette of what we're gonna paint with into our scene. Um, just to keep things organized if I ever wanna paint again with them, because these are all gonna be randomized. These are kind of like our main objects. So I've got my three bushes and we're gonna paint with selected and we're gonna paint onto the grid. And we're away and we can we're using the same spacing as we create with that rock so if we wanted to make some bigger bushes we can do but that's looking pretty cool now I'm just gonna kind of organize our scene a little bit better like put some bushes in the foreground and I'm just holding shift and rotating to make a copy of that We'll have that there and also let's get one in the foreground there. 
And obviously you can go to town, like you could add some of these smaller plants and there's even like little stones that would go nicely uh, behind the car. But anyway, let's unhide all so we can see our tree and run an interactive render. So if you are interactive rendering and you want to move into the top view, you're going to notice that it will go into the top view in the interactive render. So a quick way to solve that is in the render settings. Um, you can lock the camera to uh, that view to render. So now when I go to the top view, it's still rendering our viewport. All right, and I want to tighten up some of this scene, probably make some of the rocks bigger. Um, what you can do in the V-Ray camera, if you select it, is show the horizon line. So that black line there is this horizon line, and that's kind of a bit of a giveaway. It's not going to be dead straight, so it'll be cool to kind of make the rocks bigger for that horizon line. And also remove some of these bushes that are kind of hide in the car. Select this lot. Hold an Alt, I'll deselect the camera and then holding Shift, copy all this rock over here um, and we'll scale it up. Finally, we can take a look in this frame buffer. Let's add an exposure. And I'm just gonna pull down that highlight burn and you can see like we're bringing back more of this sky, which is nice. Um, we can up the contrast a bit because that highlight burn does take away um, some of our contrast. They're starting to look nice. We can turn on this lens effect. So if we enable the bloom and glare, you can go into this, but I think the defaults look nice. It's a nice little um, bit of glare on that on the back of the car. And yeah, you can you can play in here. Um, you could add a vignette to the camera as well in the camera settings. Um, maybe pull the saturation down a touch. Um, these filmic tone maps are really cool as well. So perhaps put power curve on there. I quite like that one and you can kind of flick them on and off to see what each one's doing but I think that is looking kind of cool if you do want to render the final render so we've just been using interactive this whole time and it looks pretty nice but I would recommend in the render settings if you go over to the render elements and add a V-Ray denoiser You'll see currently like denoiser is unavailable. So if we stop this render and render like a production render and just let that run, you can also change the size. So this is only 640 by uh, 480, but you can change that under common and there's an area like put that to HD or something. But what this is going to do is progressively render and then that's going to denoise as well. But yeah, you can see the denoising and at this early stage, it's going to kind of make it look a bit blurry. Um, but you can always turn it on and off or bring down the opacity on it. So really, really quickly there, put together a, quite a nice scene. So I look forward to seeing what you guys can do with that. This video is actually part of a larger course. So if you think you find that useful, then check out the link in the description and feel free to like and subscribe.